When charismatic but down on his luck, Stanton endears himself to clairvoyant Zena and her has-been mentalist husband, Pete, at a traveling carnival, he crafts a golden ticket to success using his newly acquired knowledge to grift the wealthy elite of 1940s New York society. This is Nightmare Alley on Night at the Movies on the Cross Border Interviews. I will ask you simple questions. You will answer in short sentences only what you believe to be absolute truth. Absolute truth. I can do that. Now, brief as you can, what is your name? Stanton Carlisle. Are you a true medium? Yes, I am. Mr. Carlisle? Doctor. About that. Please lay down. Can you read minds? Yes, I can. Under the right circumstances. Keep your answers brief. What do I want? To be found out, same as everybody else. Are you in contact with the beyond? Well, we've had our share of snake charmers in the past. We deal with them. You don't fool people, Stan. They fool themselves. I've given you a fortune! It's time that you delivered. When does it end? I want to know. <laughs> if you displease the right people, the world closes in on you very, very fast. So, Michael, 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 we have been preparing for this since we both watched this. We, I, this might be the very last episode of Night at the Movies movie review after this whole thing. We are prepared to fight. This movie is based on the 1920s book, based on the 1940s movie, Nightmare Alley. Now, I am a fan of Bradley Cooper. I am a fan of David Strathairn, if that's how you pronounce his name, who played Pete the husband. I am a fan of Richard Jenkins. I'm a fan of Mary Steinberger. I am not a fan of this Steinberger. movie. Steinberger. I am not a fan of this movie. This movie was drawn out. And I saw the original movie. I read the book. This movie tried to stay to where it played well. I just was not a fan. What about you? Let's do this. Wow. wow. Um, I, I liked it. I felt it was very circular, which you talk about not wanting a clean bow. There was no clean bow on this. Mm -hmm. And I do think they had the ability to do more with the story that they couldn't get away with in 47 when this was made into a movie the first time because they had the uh, regulations breathing down their necks and they had the communist red scare. So everyone was so fearful of what they could and could not make. And I think it was just really well acted. I really liked the script. I thought that the costuming was brilliant. I felt the cinematography was gorgeous. I thought the direction was really good. I really liked this film. I think that the way that it ended with him like going full circle and then ending up, spoiler alert, as the geek that they talk about at the beginning and him fully aware of what was going on and what was gonna happen to him, so brilliant. Like, it kept me on my feet. It kept me, like, I did, couldn't see what was coming. Kate Blanchett was brilliant in this film. Um, I will give you that. Kate Blanchett was probably my favorite part of this entire. Actually, that's untrue. Uh, Kate Blanchett and uh, Tony Collette were my two favorite parts of this movie. Tony Collette can do no wrong. Period. Yeah, I I've yet to see a performance from Tony Collette that I've gotten. Mm, that was a miss. The part where yes. I. So you talk about the ending, and I think this is where it really pissed me off. So I I, I I'm a true believer that you follow the storyline, right? The book. The original 1947 movie ends in a completely different way. And I would have oh, rather, yeah, yeah. and I would rather have seen the true ending than just end with him saying, sir, I was born to play this role and then cut to black. And I was like, 
whoa, 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 where's the rest of it? Where's the drawn out? He basically gets discovered by his old flame that he's doing this and she basically looks at him and takes pity on him. Uh Uh-uh, he was not a good person from the jump. I don't want a redemption for him. He was a shitty human being and ending that way was perfect for him because he did not deserve like that redemption arc story. Like what what he did, the the damage and harm he caused across the board. I just thought it was, it was so cool that like it ended the way it did, that we didn't get that like happy ending of it's to get his old girlfriend back and he amends his friendship with Tony Collette and he gets to do this and da, 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 da. Like I, the only thing I did not believe was when he did start drinking, I felt that he never would have drank on his own. He yeah. never would have done that. He had such strong thoughts and opinions about the concept of drinking and all the trauma that had happened around him surrounding specifically alcohol. I never would have thought he would pick up that drink and start drinking the way he did. Maybe after it all fell apart, different. Because then it would be more of like, what am I got to lose? I'm already on hard luck. But him starting to drink when he did, that was, I didn't believe that. And, but they needed a way to have it all fall apart rather than. Yeah. But it, I, I feel like the drinking did, I don't know. I just, I it felt didn't like add that, to the storyline, right? It didn't. It, and especially since he was so anti drinking and then all of a sudden shifted right to that very abruptly. And I, I, I've seen people say that it was because he felt like he was on top of the world and alcohol wouldn't touch him, but he'd seen people who were on top of the world that alcohol touched them. And I don't know if it, that was necessarily what you needed to do to prove the Icarus moment that you wanted. Cause I think it was going to happen on its own because he started doing problematic things of Kate Blanchett and she could have had that downfall of his without forcing the alcohol piece. I don't know. Yeah. It was just a weird piece of storytelling that I didn't necessarily agree with, but I, that's just me. I, I believe that overall it tried to tell a story that i think needed to be told in today's society that if you like you said the icarus story of flying too close to the sun you will get burnt i found and this might be a issue with my opinion on bradley cooper after this movie but i found the supporting characters were better than him i found the william defoe's character the uh uh was it ron perlman Oh, my mind's blanking right yeah, now. Yeah, Ron Perlman, yeah. Willem Dafoe. Yeah, Ron Perlman. I found Rooney Mara, Richard Jenkins. Like I said, these people, like even David Strathairn, I believed he was an alcoholic. Like seeing him fall down and just completely become an alcoholic, I was like, I get it. Bradley Cooper cannot act as a drunk. I mean, he probably is a drunk. He played he played a drunk in uh, uh Gaga's shit fest that he did with her, shallow or whatever. Star is born. Sure. So I just didn't get the idea that he was a drunk and he just didn't portray it to me correctly. And that's the thing. Maybe if he portrayed when he actually started drinking a little better, because they would be like, oh, well, you're drunk. And I'm like, I'm not seeing that. Because seeing someone who decided he could start drinking and then is controlling it fine. I wasn't seeing that piece. And maybe that was something they had to cut out for time, scenes of him sneaking alcohol, but like all of a sudden he was like an alcoholic and you literally only saw him pick up the drink once in her office. Mm. And I, but I'll agree, I, I don't, I, controversial take. I don't think Bradley Cooper is the strongest actor. I think he gets a lot of work because people like working with him. And his looks that lets him get nominated for things and be in situations like this movie, which is an Oscar movie and it has brilliant performances. And I think that that's my biggest issue with this because I did really like this. I don't necessarily think he fully convinced me a hundred percent. I think it was 80% convincing, but when the movie's supposed to be carried by you, I need a hundred percent. I will agree wholeheartedly on that one. Overall, I would highly recommend you watch it because it is not a bad movie. It's gorgeously shot. 
that's what I was going to say. The cinematography is amazing. I'm surprised uh, uh, the director didn't get a nomination for it, but that's here nor there. Um, yeah. Let's head over to the reviews out of five. Uh, I'm going to give it, I wish I, I wish I would have given the, uh, like half stars. Oh, you're giving it a four. You're giving, I'm giving it, a, it a four. You're giving it a four. I think Bradley Cooper not committing the full way it towards the end specifically. That's where I think I have to knock off points, but I really liked it. I'm going to give it a three. I think Bradley Cooper was the weak link in the movie. And that's really hard to say because it was really yeah. well acted for the majority of it. It's just, Hey, was the weak link and the ending, the ending to me, again, I'm an originalist. I love the, how things are written in stories. And then when you change it for, to make it look a little bit better on the screen, it just doesn't fit well with me. So I'm going to give it a three out of four out of five. And that's just because the ending and Bradley Cooper. Cool. So that is Nightmare Alley on Night of the Movies on the Cross Border Interviews with Chris Brown and Michael Nichols-Pate. <laughs>